Dr. Salabanda, please, uh, your opinion. In case of a patient with uh, multiple brain metastases, spinal metastases, and even uh, meningeal lesions, um, after multiple treatment lines, uh, what is the role or even is there a place for craniospinal irradiation? And uh, couldn't you define a patient population on your opinion that would benefit most? Thank you. Um, I would answer the question with um, yes and no. Yeah? <laughs> Meaning um, it, it really depends on the condition of the patient. Yeah? Um, we do it occasionally. We really do neuroaxis or craniospinal axis treatment. And um, we have patients who really benefit, who come back for half a year, nine months maybe. I mean, not long-term survivors in any case. And we have patients um, that really deteriorate even during the course um, of treatment. So it's a very individual decision. And, and again, I have to bring in the, the young female patient with breast cancer because we had a couple of them that where we really did craniospinal radiotherapy and they really had a benefit. Yeah? So it's difficult to define a patient population. That was your, your second question. It's, a, in my view, a very, very individual decision. But if the patient is doing fine, I mean, you should give them a chance yeah, to treat them. Thank you. Well, I am struggling against the craniospinal preventive treatment because I think that we have two problems. It's now that uh, we can do, we cannot uh, find out that if we have any uh, spinal metastasis. For this reason, I am strongly against this one. And on the other hand, I think that the normal fractionation cannot stop uh, some kind of metastasis, for example, from melanoma that we need high dose or from renal cancer tumor that we need high dose. I think that it's better to make radio surgery. I have a series of 10 patients with intramedullary metastasis and we make radio surgery in this case. I am strongly against the craniospinal preventive radiation. Any more questions? But I would start with Kita. Kita, when speaking about irradiation of uh, spinal uh, metastatic uh, lesions, the first question, how many lesions would you recommend to irradiate and when you would recommend to stop? And the second question, um, uh, the second question is, uh, how you would uh, advise to start, from which lesion, lesion you would advise. Of course, I'm not speaking about the lesion who are very close to compression, but uh, you are starting from the biggest one or you are starting from the highest one. Uh, this is the question. Well, nice, nice question. It means that, uh, first of all, we have treated until now two. Uh, intramedullary metastasis. We have not treated more than two, two metastases in the same patient. Secondly, we make unique dose in small lesion and we make hyperfractionation in big lesion. In one patient, for example, we make unique dose in one small lesion and we make hyperfractionation in one big lesion in the same time. Third, it means that the surgery is very important if we are not speaking about intramedullary or medullary metastasis. It means that this is the concept of separation surgery. It means that we can take out, we can separate the, the metastasis from the medulla, and therefore we can make irradiation. In the big tumor, I think that we have to applicate hyperfractionation. Every time that it is bone tumor, we have to applicate hyperfractionation. It means that, but uh, the question is when to stop. I don't know. I don't know either when to stop in the multiple brain metastasis. This is a big comment. I will comment with the doctor that we speak about the multiple brain metastasis. My question is when to stop. It means that which is the number? Why we discuss about three or four metastases? Why? Why? What, what, uh, which is the scientific reason that we speak more than four or more than f three and less than four and less than three? Which is the scientific explanation? Nobody can tell. I study about it. Nobody can tell because we can decide three or more, three or less. Why? Why two? Why not five? 
This is not scientific argument. But I think the problem, in my point of view, I defined it in 2010 in American Congress on Neurosurgery, is not the number, it's the volume of the global volume of the metastasis. We can make a limit in the total volume of the tumor that we have to treat, not in the number. In my point of view, when I publish is that less than 1.5 cc. If we are down 1.5 cc global volume, we can treat. We have up to 1.5 uh, cc, we have not to treat, we have, we have to make whole brain. This is a palliative treatment. This is my answer. Thanks. I, I think I have to, I, I'm your opinion that we don't really know why one to three or four is really the cutoff. There's actually no scientific evidence for it. So we have to really work on that. And as I said, yeah, it's an individual decision. <coughs> but um, for the volume, I also agree. But I think um, if you have a patient with 15 very small lesions, or 10 very small lesions that might be under the volume you just mentioned in total, I think the, the more lesions you have, the more likelier is the probability that you have single cells somewhere in the brain. Yeah? So I think it's not just volume. Volume is one aspect, but there's probably also something in the number of lesions you have. I don't know if we can really discriminate it in the end, or if it's just a trial and error yeah, thing, and we keep whole brain as a salvage treatment. I think that would be the, the approach that would be followed. We will probably never have the data for it. Yeah, but I think it's not only volume. Thank you very much. Julian, and I have a question for you uh, concerning the person who, who is taking care about risks in the institute. How do you think, uh, what education must have this person? What education we need to provide to this person if he would appear in the institute? And how long uh, it can take? Well, it's a good question. Uh, of course, it's, uh, it's not really a work for, for cl clinical scientists. It's, uh, uh, we are too busy to do this job. Uh, uh, however, when I look um, who was involved in European institutions, sometimes they are physicists uh, who switched to, to this job. Sometimes they are simply risk managers. And this is a group of people who exist really in industry in, uh, uh, in aviation, for example, if I'm looking for what happened uh, in France, uh, so they really adopted uh, ISO concept, which is n nothing to do with risk management, uh, but anyway, they adopted to, to clinical specialties, so they translated it, uh, giving uh, proper naming and, and proper terminology. So perhaps this, uh, this has to be done something new, it's a new field. But as I, as, I mentioned, as I showed you, in many countries, they did a lot about it, much more than we even expected. So it's ongoing. Maybe it's not very visible. Um, I think that there is opportunity for a new group of people that has to be invited to the clinics and, of course, paid, so it increases cost. But it's coming. Thanks a lot. Maya, к вам я вопрос вообще провокационный. Дело в том, что My question is provocative. You know that stereotactic radiotherapy has very good effect in small lesions. Here is the idea that my, it might be that in patients whom we cause palliative uh, uh, treatment, uh, maybe we could uh, go to hyperfractionated, where we'll radiate primary lesion and then separately lymph nodes, hoping that what is in between will be uh, controlled uh, under hemotherapy. Yeah. Yes. If you do that, you will do that. And let us see what will come out of it. Because each patient who comes and goes for treatment has to go through the committee judgment. You cannot take a patient saying, I will give him a stereotactic treatment and chemotherapy. Of course, it would be not a traditional approach. Thank you. Uh, which is, uh, how to say it, boring me most of all. It was uh, deal with your presentation, of course, but a little bit outside of the uh, presentation. When we are speaking about patients with high risk, are you irradiating uh, regional lymph nodes? 
And the, the second question, which, which is also very close to the first one, if it is a patient with already involved solitary lymph nodes, do you recommend to make stereotactic boost for this solitary lymph node in addition to whole uh, pelvic radiation? And would you recommend in this case radiation of paraortic lymph nodes? Uh, okay, <clears throat> try to answer on the, on the first uh, questions is, is a tricky one because, <clears throat> but it's a very good question, so, uh, prophylactic irradiation is uh, still uh, some place for debate, uh, for controversy in radiotherapy. In our center, we have a policy that for high-risk group, we irradiate pelvic lymph nodes uh, with elective dose. It's uh, 46 grays and two gray fractions of 50.4 and 1.8 grays. It depends, but usually prefer two gray. Uh, <clears throat> there are no uh, randomized clinical trial, uh, so no data, no evidence level one which could show that such uh, treatment, prophylactic treatment, at uh, translate into uh, overall survival benefit. But uh, <clears throat> when you look on uh, breast cancer, for example, as we as uh, oncologists look, uh, so when we have a, a group of patients with high with risk of metastatic disease and, and breast cancer, so we also included uh, lymph node irradiation. When you have uh, head and neck cancer, we have the same policy and many, many other. So <clears throat> for prostate can cancer, it's naturally to, to add pelvic irradiation. Also, when you look uh, to, to the surgeon, to the urologist, they, in all cases, uh, perform uh, even extensive, nowadays is a standard of care, extensive lymph adenectomy as a prophylactic uh, treatment. So there are some proof from surgeon from surgery uh, data that such treatment improve uh, of our survival. Of course, there are no level one evidence, no head-to-head -head, uh, comparison, but there are a strong evidence from different um, sites, different centers, that such prophylactic treatment, surgery prophylactic treatment should improve. Also, <clears throat> we have uh, some data from uh, for radiotherapy that could be uh, improvement in such treatment, but as I mentioned, we don't have uh, uh, such data. Uh, during the last uh, um, uh, conference, uh, ASTRO, which was held in uh, San Antonio in 2015, uh, well, a presentation from France, uh, Getuk, uh, I don't remember, 16 or 15, uh, the, the, the number of the trial from um, a very large uh, old major trial uh, where I presented to clearly showed that uh, elective irradiation, prophylactic irradiation of, of pelvic lymph nodes uh, don't, uh, doesn't translate into <clears throat> of our survival. But the uh, commentator for this uh, presentation, Professor Mark Roche, uh, show the, um, that uh, Volume, which were um, volume of irradiated lymph nodes, prophylactic lymph nodes, which were included in this strike, was uh, extremely wrong. It was a, we can say <clears throat> that it could be a geographic error because for prophylactic lymph nodes, it was uh, truly a little bit uh, larger than in only um, prostate irradiation. So it's this. Um, clinical trial, randomized, large clinical trial with long follow-up uh, couldn't answer the questions uh, for the uh, <laughs> irradiation or not irradiation the lymph, pelvic lymph node. So the question is still open. Uh, now it's uh, going one American large trial which could clearly <clears throat> show us maybe in a few years uh, what is uh, the true. Yes, uh, what is the uh, importance of uh, irradiation of pelvic lymph nodes. Uh, and <clears throat> the second question is uh, even harder for me, but uh, <laughs> uh, as I mentioned uh, in my, uh, a little bit in my presentation, that uh, if you have even one solitary lymph node metastatic, so maybe you should, uh, if we have a uh, possibility, uh, at uh, higher doses, yes. Uh, also very important is that uh, mm, in such situation you should uh, add uh, uh, androgen deprivation therapy. It could be because androgen deprivation therapy is a standard of care. And you can add or not radiation therapy to this. If you are going, if you have a 
on possibility. Of course, the radiotherapy technique should be the best as possible on, 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 your, on your grant. So now we are trying to implement even cyber knife to, to irradiation to, to lymph nodes, but the, uh, there are no uh, large uh, data from, from well, not even clinical trial, but from prospective, uh, prospective data from single institutions that such treatment uh, it's, um, it's, um, give a significant improvement. But maybe we, we will irradiate such a patient according to this oligometastatic uh, disease statement. Because when we have one uh, metastatic disease, maybe we should add uh, some uh, radical treatment to, 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 to the patient. But what is important also, imaging. If in such case, you should uh, perform, for example, PET-CT with choline or PSM. MA uh, tracer, so it's, it's even better, and try to irradiate. Thanks. Uh, Stephanie, I have the question for you also, but I think that because of time limit, I would uh, ask it a little bit later, privately. I would like to ask a question in Russian to Maya, but since my colleagues I'm not listening to interpretation and I'll ask my question in English. It's a presentation and uh, my question is about the recommendation, latest recommendation. According to them, uh, there is an uh, uh, upper limit for the dose to the, uh, to the, uh, uh, yeah, to the primary tumor, uh, it's 60C. How can you comment uh, the uh, Dutch experience where in many clinics, uh, uh, and uh, you said, and uh, in recommendations uh, said that, uh, that uh, main uh, explanation for that is the risk uh, of uh, uh, pneumonitis uh, and uh, limitations uh, in that. Uh, what, how can you comment the practice in uh, 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 in Dutch clinics, uh, where the dose to the uh, to the uh, primary tumor is a function of uh, expected uh, risk, uh, and uh, you have an experience uh, of a higher dose to the uh, to the primaries in uh, in your clinic with very good 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 results. You speak about uh, uh, about the dose, increasing upper, the dose, upper dose upper, limit. <coughs> yes, because when we treated the patients by 3D, 3D uh, radiotherapy, we used the dose uh, in the boost, boost in the tumor, up to uh, 70, 76. Yeah, yeah. 76. Yeah. So uh, it was 3D, and but, but. In these cases, but I reviewed um, uh, the court of uh, treated patients, we don't treat it fully uh, mediastinum. Yes, for sure. Yes, because it is a lot of toxicity. Yeah. And the uh, tumor control was good, yeah. but the but the local overall control, uh, it was not so it's good. It's not translated to oral survival. Exactly. Okay. Thank you very much. Спасибо большое, Maya. And I have a question uh, uh, to uh, uh, you. Uh, you. You touched very interesting problem in the treatment of uh, uh, prostate cancer. I mean, uh, oligometastatic di disease. Uh, do you have a personal experience in treating oligometastatic? Uh, and uh, does the site uh, had, uh, has a, uh, does uh, has any well, uh, importance uh, for treating oli oligometastatic. <coughs> yeah. Yeah, so oligometastatic is a very interesting topic, and uh, even a hot topic, we can say, in uh, prostate uh, radiotherapy and surgery also, and chemotherapy. No, but it's not only uh, for, for prostate cancer, for other solid tumors like lung cancer, breast cancer, <coughs> melanoma cancer. So for um, prostate cancer, it's a quite new idea. So uh, in my practice, uh, I have some patients, but at that moment when they are 
they were treated. I even uh, told you know about oligometastatic disease. This is my something uh, how to say my internal uh, <laughs> yes, uh, uh, <clears throat> way of thinking that it could be it could be reasonable to treat uh, a single or two metastatic disease for especially for a patient in the in the young uh, age, uh, very good uh, conditions. Yes, uh, also. After a long discussion with the, with the patient, that is not the standard of care, yes, because we can go on only on palliative way, uh, as um, androgen deprivation therapy, or try to minimize the volume of the disease. So even for such a group, it could be even maybe 15 patients, something like this. They I observe. If, a very long uh, survival time, even without progression of, of disease. So, but I, I don't have any scientific evaluation of this uh, of this uh, small group. Yes. So <clears throat> maybe in the in the near future, it's uh, it's my personal idea that we, I am going to convince uh, urologists and other radiation oncologists and also clinical oncologists to construct such clinical trial in Poland, but maybe not only in Poland, um, to, to, yes, to yeah. multi, multi, yeah, multiple. Uh, so maybe, maybe could be possible, even this year, maybe at, at the beginning uh, next year, to start such clinical trial, because it's uh, uh, quite interesting. And also what is important, that I notice that some quite large group of patients could be could be included in such trial. So maybe we are going to, to open such such trial in Poland, maybe not. Thank you. And second question, uh, what, uh, do you, uh, what, what's your personal feeling? Is there a difference between, for example, lymph node metastasis that they are also f uh, stage 4? Yes, uh, and, yes. And, uh, <coughs> it's a generally, we, uh, generally we, we can say, <laughs> fortunately in this case, that for prostate cancer, majority of metastases are bone metastases. We know from the uh, autopsy, very large data which clearly show that probably the stage of disease, the biology, maybe not stage, that we have a limited, yes, then we have some micrometastatic disease in bone, and then to add the, uh, add the um, sites. For example, when we have a patient, a meat patient with, for example, liver metastasis or lung metastasis to soft tissue metastasis, the prognosis for such patients are much, much worse than for patients when we have uh, one or two metastatic disease in, in bone, especially in actual bone. So uh, <clears throat> we can probably separate the, the subgroup of uh, the group of patients into with metastatic disease into soft tissue, bone uh, and metastatic lymph nodes. <laughs> Excuse me? And lymph nodes. Uh, they are yes, and the lymph nodes probably disease. it's a little bit different the group too. Yes, yes, I agree. Thank you very much. Thank you.